this video will show you how to send a UDP packet using the packet generator utility in NetScan Tools Pro 11. First of all, I'm going to launch the packet capture utility so that we can see exactly what we want to capture. We're going to capture UDP going out and any ICMP responses coming back. This is going to be the target port we're going to use, so we'll filter by that in the capture utility. So we'll start that and we'll go back to NetScan Tools Pro. Now we've selected UDP from the list. Let's select Don't Fragment just so we can see that and maybe one of these bits right here. Now we're going to go ahead and hit Send Now to do a manual packet send. We'll put the destination port to match what we're listening to with packet capture. Here's some payload. I'm going to add a little more to it. Of course we could use the hex editor to generate payload of our own that could be binary such as this, but we're not going to do that right now. You can attach a file to the UDP packet right here by checking this box and locating the file. So let's go ahead and send the packet and in the main window we said we're going to send three with at an interval of a quarter of a second apiece. Packets have been sent. Now let's go look at the packet capture. So we're going to stop and as you can see, here's the packets going out, the three UDP packets, and the ICMP responses. So I'm going to double click on that. And as you can see, here's our data. Here is the IP addresses. And as you can see, there's the port. And we had some flags and um, the various service bits that we had checked. Now you can see the ID ICMP response coming back. It includes a destination unreachable, port unreachable message. That means there was nothing listening on port 65. So, as you can see, there's the ICMP header, and you can see as part of ICMP it sends back the portion of the UDP packet that it needs to send, and in this case it included everything because it was short enough, and you can see our original data in there. And there's the next packet, the next response, and the next packet, and the next response. Of course, you can always right click in here and use this selection to launch a packet capture analyzer such as Wireshark. So I'm going to close this and go back and talk a little bit about this. You have various header options that you could set. You could set, as I said, fragmentation and the class point bits, the time to live, and various other field values. And you can also override the packet length that appears in the header. If you wish, you can change the MAC addresses of the Ethernet header itself. <music>